Hi, Skip. You all right? I'm awesome, my brother. How are you? Very good, thank you. So I don't want to steal your thunder. For anybody who doesn't know, you tell us who's Skip. Skip is um, just a human being who's trying to do good in the world. Um, but I've learned a few things by being majorly, majorly challenged. Uh, one of my biggest challenges that really opened up a whole new way of life for me was when I broke my back and got told I was never going to walk again. And when I believed what I was told, uh, I hit hardcore depression, life became very dark and heavy, and I didn't understand how people could be happy, and, and I just got myself into a, into a hole. And then when my mum came and said, look, there's someone, he broke his back, and he came back fitter and stronger than before, and he was in traction, and, and he actually inspired like millions of people around the world. And I got who? And she goes, Bruce Lee. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake, mum, he's a movie star, and it's not real. Like, get out. Yeah. He goes, no, it, it, it's real. And so I started to absorb uh, as many teachings from him as I could. And what I learned, it's so simple, but dude, this stuff is so forgotten. We all know that we're a body, a mind, and a spirit or a soul. And the challenge is that most people are only connected to their minds in negative ways. And they connect, you know, most people have forgotten about their bodies by the time they're past being a teenager. And, and this thing starts to suffer. But when I learned how to really feed the body, the mind and the spirit, the most incredible things started happening in life. And I ended up having a full recovery, didn't have surgery, didn't have any operations. And when this life, like there's such an intelligence behind this game of life. And when we can yeah. connect to that, when that started to breathe through me without the fear, without the doubt, without the depression, without the you know, the angst and the anxiety and all the stuff that I was living with on, on a daily basis, uh, I ended up going back to gymnastics and gained the English Sports Acrobatics Championship title. And, and the reason I'm saying that is not for me to be any more special than anybody else, but I found that champion within me. And what I know is that there's nothing more special than me than anybody else, but everybody has this champion within them. And they can only access that champion when they fully find what strength they truly have. And what I've learned is that people have gotten lazy. Um, that's why I believe that people's immunity is going down. That's why I believe that, you know, half the reason why this epidemic is traveling around the world at the moment and, and affecting people where people are now, it, it's not about the biological effect of this COVID-19 or this, this coronavirus. What's happening now, it's a fear epidemic. Yeah. That's what's really going on for people because those people, and this is the absolute truth, those people that have got a high immune system, those people that know how to build up their body's defenses, they've got nothing to worry about. Literally nothing to worry about whatsoever. But you just have to turn, like, I literally went past um, a petrol station yesterday and dude, the headline on this paper was, no one is safe. And yeah. it's like, my God, people don't realize that the press was built for statistics. You know, it's built to grab your attention. It's not built to serve you. It's not built to boost up your immunity. It's not built to give you a life of freedom. It's built to make money. And they're making more money now than probably most industries around the world. So, so who's Skip is, you know, Skip now gets, well, I say he gets to travel the world. He doesn't get to travel anywhere at the moment, but normally he gets to travel yeah, the normally, world. Yeah. yeah, he gets to, you know, run these events and retreats uh, all over the world. And I've, you know, I have the fortune of working with the rich and famous and working with you know, everyone down to anyone who really wants to improve the quality of their life. And it comes down to not just feeding the body what it needs from a nutritional point of view, but feeding the body what it needs from a mental and a spiritual point of view as well. And understanding that when you affect the mind, it affects your body and your spirit. When you affect your spirit, it affects your body and your mind. When you affect your body, it affects your mind and your spirit. All those three elements, one isn't more holier than the other. And all three are super, super powerful and super, super intelligent. And all we've really got to do is understand how unbelievable we can be as human beings to literally create heaven on earth, despite you know, what madness might be going on around the world. When we connect to the truth, then we live in freedom. So my job now is to just go around the world and try and set as many people free as possible. Okay, uh, I'm going to completely, the questions I wrote and the order have gone out the window already straight away. Wow, wow, um, and the reason <laughs> why is you're talking about that spiritual side. Now, I was talking about this recently, so I've just ran 
uh, one of my high-end training uh, courses, which is seven days, it's full on. We sort of start eight, nine in the morning. Sometimes we finish at 11, 12 o'clock at night. It's, it's really heavy, uh, but there's a lot of mindset in there. Now, it's a property training course, but my first three days are all on mindset and, and the mm. spiritual side. Yeah. Now, one of the elements in there, um, I actually had a, a, an event last year, a paid event, and I had two people walk out of it uh, who'd, who'd paid um, because I started talking about the spiritual side. Now, when I've got people sat there in front of me, I say to them, it would be a lot easier for me to not teach this bit that I'm going to teach and just replace it for a couple of property slides saying, do this and you learn that. Let's look at this and you can make that amount of money. But for me to do that, I wouldn't be serving you and I wouldn't be serving myself to tell you what I feel, that spiritual side and that, that connection. So um, tell me about that because that, that's the one thing that, it stops me having any fear. I don't believe in death. I believe I've always been here. Um, I'm completely relaxed. I'm always present. I just love the moment. And it's because of that spiritual side. So tell me what that means to you. Mate, it's life. It's like, you know, you look at like, you know, the, 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 the Northern Lights behind. There's a, you know, we can get into science. There was one substance that started everything. And that substance now is in everything that's alive. It's in nature. It's in our fruits and vegetables. It's in us. It's in the animal kingdom. It's life. And, and if you didn't um, mention that truth, because this is what it is, it's, it's the truth, then you would be, um, you wouldn't be, first of all, you wouldn't be doing service to yourself because you wouldn't be speaking the truth. And what we know is that the leaders of the 21st century are the people that have come here to give people the truth. Now in that, it's gonna shake up people's belief systems because when it comes to uh, talking about spirit, people have a lot of weird um, responses to it because they might think, oh, well, he's gonna start dumping religious stuff on me now, or he's gonna to start to get all like weird and woo woo, or, you know, woo wooey on me. Well, this is how I describe it. Everyone's walking around with these smartphones at the moment. Everyone's got a smartphone. Now, everyone now, especially right now, everyone's connecting to 3G, 4G, 5G, and Wi-Fi. Now, why do we connect with that stuff? Because we want to get connected to people around the world. We want to be able to upload and download things. Well, humans designed this. What designed us? There's a designer. There's a creator behind this. And we are creative beings. And if we're not in creation mode, at some level, we go into competition mode. And when we go into competition mode, we cut off this essence of life that breathes through us. So when we're connecting to things like Wi-Fi on a day, I mean, what's one of the first things that, you know, when we're obviously not in lockdown, you go around a friend's house, you go into a business, you, you know, you go into an office. What's one of the first things that most people ask for? The Wi-Fi code. Yeah. And why are they asking for the Wi-Fi code? Because they want to get connected. Now, when, and I've got an online course that is actually called Connect Now, and it's because we learn how to connect now right in the moment to the absolute truth. You get to connect now to your body. You get to connect now to your mind. You get to connect now to your spirit. Now, if we're talking about spirit, let's compare spirit to Wi-Fi. Right? Yep. Now, Wi-Fi, we're using it every single day. Can we see it? No. Can we touch it? No. no. Can we taste it? No. Can we feel it? No. Can we smell it? No. So none of our senses can pick up Wi-Fi. The reason why human life has developed so fast in the last literally 100 or so years is because of technology. Technology has not come from our physical plane because our five senses can only pick up stuff through sound, through sight, through smell, through touch, through feeling. That's what our five senses pick up. Yeah. This stuff comes from the spiritual realm. So when we talk about spirit, let's talk about Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is non-visible and it's non-physical, but yet we use it every single day. So when we start to have that spiritual connection, what we're doing is we're connecting to what I call supreme intelligence, universal wisdom, source energy, God, if you want to call it that. We're connecting to something which is the essence, the intelligence behind the game of life. There is an order. There is a science to life. 
you know, how come the planet, you know, the, our, planet, our three planets revolve around, you know, the sun, the moon, and the earth? Because we've got a North Pole, we've got a South Pole, and because of the moon, there are waves that, you know, it, it makes the waves of the sea move. Life happens in waves. Energy happens in waves. And if we don't get connected to our spirit, what happens is when we're at the top of the wave, we're loving it. Everything's good. But when we go at the bottom of the wave and things aren't the way that we want it, we now start to complain. We now start to go inwardly. We now start to feel like we're not where we're supposed to be and we're disconnected from the truth. Because if you look at an energy wave or a sound wave, which part of that wave is the most important part? All know. of it. Yeah. The whole part of it. You can't have the top part of the wave without the bottom part. Yeah. No, so what we good. now know is as this planet is going through absolute craziness at the moment, uh, like, you know, like the group that we're connected with, yeah. we're having very different conversations to uh, say, like, what mass consciousness has happened. We're all getting prepared so that when this economy has a massive hit, we're all waiting for it. We're like, like come on, it's going to happen. Because what happens is most things go on discount. Yeah. So we sweep in when it's discounted, but most people are freaking out around that point. Because what we've learned to do is we've learned to understand the journey through the waves of life. Yeah. And, you know, if we're not connected to that truth, like, you know, I was recently living out in Australia, right on the beach on Mermaid Beach. And, you know, I'd be out there every day surfing. Now, if I, when I didn't learn how to do it, I got caught in a rip. And, dude, it was one of the scariest things I've ever experienced. I didn't know what a rip was. I just went out there undisciplined, unfocused. And I just went for it. And luckily, I'm a strong swimmer. But without me having that strength, dude, I could have literally got pulled under and st because it was, I was coming up. And then, bam, another wave was coming. And I was getting swallowed in the undercurrent. Most people in life are in that undercurrent. And I realized, I got out there. My heart was pounding. I was like, right, dude, next, get a lesson. Find an expert. Yeah. You know, find someone who can teach you what to do. And, and it was literally about five minutes of an education and I got why I was going wrong. And this is why, you know, in life, if we don't have a, a coach, if we don't have an expert, if we don't have someone who knows the road ahead, chances are we're going to keep tripping up because when we hit that dip, we're going to start complaining. We're going to start blaming. Discipline goes out the window. And what you do is you stop applying your focus in the way that you need to. So what do you do? You stop getting the results that you deserve. So, yeah, I was going to come on now to discipline because what I found out that, you know, that to me is it's where the magic of life is born. It's the only way that you can create mastery is through discipline. Awesome. Love that. I've got a couple of questions around that. I want to hold them though for a bit further. So for me, the spiritual side, um, it was actually a book. So I've always kind of sat on the fence with religion. Um, I, I never ruled it out, but I, I don't know. I just... I felt that there was probably something bigger, like I, I believed in some sort of creator. I kind of sat on the fence um, and I got recommended off a, a, an old mentor of mine. He gives me conversations with God. Oh, brilliant. Neil Donald Walsh. Yeah, that, that, that was the trigger. And I literally, reading that book, I just got a feeling that I'd not had before. And, and it was just call it awakening, whatever, but it, it literally happened as I read the book and I started to just, I connected with things and I, I just felt a different feeling. And that for me was, was the start of the whole thing. Nice, beautiful, beautiful. You're opening up to the truth. You know, so many of us in life are, uh, are just born into this 3D reality. And our perception of life is like that, where the whole, you know, life is like, expanding all the time and th th this substance that was at the start of all creation that's now in everything that's living its job is to expand its job is to become more its job is to allow more life to grow through it we're just a physical representation of that and w when i ask the question at like my my live events and I, I i say right hands up if you think that you are a human who every now and again, you might get to have a spiritual experience and people, oh yeah, that's me. And they put their hands up and I said, or do you ultimately believe that your spirit who's now having a human experience and you see him, oh yeah, yeah, I want that one. Because if you just a mind and body, then 
what's making your heart beat? You know, they still don't know that when we're in our mama's womb, they still don't know what that thing is that makes our heart start beating for the first time in our mama's womb. Dude, there is so much wisdom inside the human body. This stuff just doesn't happen, dude. Yeah. I do believe in evolution. I do believe that we're meant to expand and, and keep becoming more. But dude, this is a freaking design. This doesn't happen over evolution. There is an intelligence that sat down and said, right, we're going to stick two eyes at the front. We're going to have a nose here. We're going to have a mouth here. We're going to be able to hear here. We're going to have a heart beating in here. We're going to have this skeleton that's going to be a framework. There's going to be this blood that delivers oxygen, nutrients, and, and water around the whole body. We're going to have a liver. We're going to all of these. Dude, this is perfection. But the challenge is the lifestyle that most people are living is they're abusing themselves. They're abusing their body. I mean, just look at the educations that we're getting at the moment from the government. Go out and buy pasta. Go out and buy tinned food. Dude, all this stuff is dead. All that stuff is going to drain the body of energy. And what we want is more energy. You know, we're made of energy. And the more energy that we have pulsing through our being, that we can focus into our creations, the more awakened we become on a daily basis. And that ain't going to come from pastors and tin food. You know, I walk in the, in the supermarket and, and I, I, I did a post on it the other day and I was like, right, what's wrong with this picture? All the dead stuff was gone. All yeah. the alive stuff, the fruits, the vegetables, nuts and seeds and all this stuff that's had the energy, the sun shining on it, it's had the energy, the planet breathing it. Uh, breathing into it it's learned how to weather different seasons which we have to do as human beings all of that alive food which is all these beautiful bright colors is all still there yeah unbelievable so we have to understand that i don't think our governments are giving us the best advice but we can't be rebels and we you know we have to appreciate what they're doing but at the same time we have to take back control and understand that this is, this is your body, it's your mind. And if you don't start to take back control and you allow society or our governments to program it, you're going to end up going through the same challenges that most people go through. And that means that you're going to live like the average. And unfortunately, then you're going to suffer like the average because these are the latest stats that are saying two out of every three of the people now are either going to get a heart disease, a cancer, or a diabetes. No one wants any of that stuff. And even yesterday, uh, the World Health Organization actually released, stop watching the news. They've, re they've understood that when we watch the news, what it's putting in people is yeah. the fear. Yeah. And that fear lowers the immunity immediately because we're, you know, if, if people are worried about a virus or an illness, if we understand that life is, is a game of vibrations. It, 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 we can tune into these different frequencies, just like we tune into different frequencies on the radio, where we can just press a button or turn a dial and immediately we tune into a different frequency and we receive a different message. It's the same with humans. When we learn how to turn our frequency up and we learn how to raise our vibration up, what happens is we go into these higher states of consciousness. Now, whatever the virus is, whether they call it bird flu, swine flu, uh, SARS, coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever they call it, viruses can only operate in a low frequency. What do you think is more intelligent, the virus or the mind, the body, and the spirit from humanity? We're way more intelligent than this stuff. However, if we go into fear and we disconnect to the truth, we lower our frequency, and you've got all these viruses down here and up here, can't be got. But if we lower our, our frequency, guess what? Bam, it's got you. And this is what's happening for people now. They're going into the fear. And, and as we know around the world, and that's not even me saying this, is, this is Deepak Chopra, he says people aren't even dying of the diseases anymore. They're dying of the diagnosis of the disease. Yeah, what's going agree. on now? People are dying of the fear yeah. of the disease. Not, they haven't even been diagnosed yet. So, yes, yeah, so, so when we connect to this spirit, like yourself, this truth breathes through you and it's a feeling. It's not something you're going to get in your, in your mind. And th this is one of the things that Bruce Lee taught me. He says, don't think, feel. Like in our gut here, we have an internal guidance system, our, our intuition, a gut feeling. And what the ancients used to say is that our second brain is in our gut and your gut feeling is never, ever going to let you down. 
but most people's brains are being programmed by systems and societies and organizations that are broken they're not sustainable you know on the planet and that education that gets in guess what it brings up negativity it brings up fear it disconnects them from the truth so what we now know from a, a guy that we actually filmed for, for the documentary I'm making, a guy called Dr. Joe Dispenza, this is his quote. 90%, according to the psychological model, 90% of people's thoughts and emotions in today's world are negative. This doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, old or young, black or white, tall or short, big or whatever, nine, because we all are connecting to similar things around the world. And if we don't cut ourselves off, from things that are just bringing us down, then guess what? We become a part of the problem instead of part of the solution. And if you're only living life with a mind and a body, it's like trying to hop your way through life when you've got two legs. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> how, does, how do people connect to this thing? Because I, I listen to Joe's work as well and uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Deepak. How yeah. did, if somebody, is wanting to understand what we're talking about now. And right now, people are watching and thinking, fucking hell, them two are mad. Which, <laughs> no. probably, there's probably people who are thinking that. What is your yeah. advice? Because for me, I just say, get curious. I say, just have an open mind. And I lead them towards certain books. Um, I, I do an experiment. I forgot what it's called. Is it the can Candali? Is it the, um, the machine where it... Um, I don't know if you've seen it, where you change the frequency and the salts, the change pattern. Have you, have you seen that experiment? No. So I, I bought one of them. It was oh, with experiment. sound, you mean? With yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So I bought one of them uh, yeah. a couple of years ago, and, and I physically show them that uh, everything's energy and that through the different frequencies, it's impacting physical things. Mm -hmm. so I say, because we can't pick it up with our five senses, I'm going to bring that into your reality and show you how to physically see that. Um, so what would your advice be to somebody who says, okay, so how do I find this spiritual side? What do I need to do to connect with it? Well, let me really make this make common sense. I'll ask you a couple of questions and you can just give me what answers you feel are true. So let's go back to children because I believe that kids are more connected to this spirit. Now, do kids have a lot more natural joy and love compared to a lot of adults? Yeah. Do children have a lot more energy than most adults? Yeah. Do children learn faster than most adults? Yeah. Do children live in the moment more than most adults? Yeah. Do children speak the truth compared to most yeah. adults? So all of those qualities that I just mentioned, no one taught them to us. We naturally have them. But then what's happened is, We've been brainwashed, we've been educated in certain ways that those natural qualities seem to be missing for most adults. So one thing that we need to go and do is study the younger generation, because for the first time in human history, the children are teaching the parents and the grandparents new things. How come? Technology. Yeah. And a lot of adults, like grandparents, they're freaking out with technology because it just spins them out. But if they didn't freak out and get stuck in a certain part of the mind and they allowed that spirit to breathe through them, they'd be connected to this stuff. Now, a lot of people don't know this. You know, the reason why we've got a lot of this smart technology is because of Steve Jobs. Guess what his mission was? Most people don't know this. His mission was to put the spirit back into technology. Wow. And I believe that's what he did because before then, it was very left brain. It wasn't where you could do things on instinct and just check things out. It was, you had to be that way, you know, intellectually, you have to be kind of that way switched on. Whereas nowadays, we're now seeing like more millionaires around the world being created with teenagers because they've got something to offer online. And it might be crazy, but people are buying into this stuff. So more opportunities are happening now when we bring the truth back to life, and what I really truly believe now that at this time in human history, and, and again, this is not weird, this is science, this is not a bunch of hippies saying this, this is not a bunch of woo-woo people saying this, this is science, um, and you'll hear like Bruce Lipton and all these people talk about it as well, where if we carry on, if, if we carry on the way that we were, 
there would be no life under the sea in 2048. Now, it, it, we can say that, well, well, I don't care about that. Well, we're a part of the ecosystem. And nature is here before us, and nature will be here after us if the human race basically gets deleted from the planet. Because what's happened is we become like parasites. And the way that we're living is not sustainable on planet Earth. You know, we're talking about global warming. We're talking about, you know, sea levels rising. We're talking, you know, there's so much that is happening. And, and I truly believe a lot of that is happening because we're disconnected from the truth. And we've gone through different stages through life where I believe that we went through the dark ages. Then we went through the industrial age where, you know, there were some winners and losers in the industrial age, but it managed to change and improve a lot of people's lives around the world. Then we went through, say, like the information age where everyone was, got, you know, they were getting like addicted to all this information. But what happened is everyone is now like just wanting information, but no one's really using that information to experience a transformation. So they're drowning in all this information. But how many people are out there really living with wisdom? And it can only be wisdom when you apply it to yourself and then you share it with somebody else and they get it and they share it. So now you've got this ripple effect of goodness going throughout humanity. Then we've gone through the entertainment phase where everybody just sits there like this or they swipe in and they just want to be instantly entertained. We're looking for these instant hits of gratification, instant hits of dopamine, instant hits of feeling good. No one's prepared to get disciplined to do the work anymore. They just want instant results and it's stupid. You know, if you go and plant a seed in the garden and you want to grow some carrots or some fruits or vegetables, if I planted those seeds and went out two weeks later and started complaining because there was no carrots, you're going to be like, uh, skip. There's a process. It takes yeah. a bit of time. Just chill. Let nature do its thing. Come back at this time. Pick them and you've got your carrots. Where we're going through now, the phase that humanity is now going through, where I think that we're, humanity is now being split. The, the ones that don't want to wake up, the ones that only want to stay with their mind and body, they're going to go in one direction. And it's not a sustainable way of living because they're disconnected from the most powerful part of what they are. And it's our spirit. Now, this phase that we're now going through, some call it the golden age phase, some call it the awakening phase, some call it the, uh, the, like the phase of Aquarius, whatever you want to call it, it's a phase now where this stuff has been written in scriptures, dude, for tens of thousands of years. When you go back and you understand that when you connect to all elements of what you are, your mind, your body, and your spirit, you are so in alignment with life that you're almost 10 steps ahead of the average person out there. You will see what most people won't see. You'll see a trend. You'll see an opportunity. You'll see where you can go and add value to life. You'll see what needs to be improved within yourself. You will start to see things that most people don't even see. And, and you know, we get told again and again and again that million pound opportunities are literally passing people every single week, but they don't even see it. And why don't they see it? because they're not in the present moment. When we connect the body, the mind, and the spirit, what it gives us is an awareness of being in the now, but most people aren't in the now. They might be there physically, but their mind is somewhere else, or their emotions are somewhere else, or their focus is somewhere else. And what your five senses are picking up should be feeding you what you need so that you can show up in every single moment as the best version of yourself. And if people even got anywhere close to that, they would be amazed at what they will find from within themselves. Because I, I, I'll tell you what, Steve, what I think is gonna happen now is on planet Earth, and I, I said, I, I think we're gonna see a divide. The ones that wanna become awakened are gonna get it. And what I think that is gonna happen now is we're gonna see the rise and the birth of what I'm gonna call the new superhuman race, or what people already are calling the new superhuman race where we're connected to something that if you only believe in the mind and body, you're just connecting to a fraction of what you are. Yeah. Okay. So questions have well gone out the window now that you've gone down this route, but I love this. Um, so for me, um, one of the things that none of us obviously have the answer to everything and I'm always open-minded, but one thing, I just don't believe for one minute. So when, when I'm teaching people, I don't believe for one minute that I've worked, waited 13 billion years for this one go. And after that 80 years, that's it. I never, ever get to have a go again. 
And if that is the case, I say to people, if you don't believe that, you've not been here before, and you get that one little go, you never believe in reincarnation, what the fuck are you doing stressing out and fucking saying, oh, I don't know if to buy that house, what happens if it goes wrong and I lose my two grand? You've waited 13 fucking billion years and you're never getting a go again, and you're fucking stressed or that your hair's not right or that you, it's just, for me, it's just bonkers thinking, it's just crazy. So, so let me tell you this that when we've had people come on um my advanced courses i i, I don't just t t teach this stuff on an intellectual level and what happens is there are you know we, we have different people you know selling the events around the world and to give you an idea like the last one we did in um in uh, singapore um just before this craziness started uh I said to people, we turned up and I said to him on the day, right, guys, don't have breakfast. When you come to the venue, I've got a surprise for you. And they all turned up and they were like, oh, what's the surprise? You know, he's got like, a special breakfast laid out for us. And I said, right, guys, I promised you this. I promised you that I was going to tap you into a frequency where your body can start to burn fat for energy, not become a sugar burner where you're craving some type of sugar stimulant or caffeine for energy that's something outside of you that when you need that for energy your energy is going to go up but then guess what it's going to come crashing down i said i promised you that you'll have so much more energy that you'll be connected to more than just things in this physical reality i said i promised you that you will be able to be so protected that a virus and illness is not going to be able to get you now i had three people um call me just before and they're like, oh, Skip, I've got this virus. Uh, I, I'm having hot and cold sweats. I can't come. And I was like, guys, rebook your flights, rebook your, your hotels. You need to be at Breakthrough Mastery because if you don't learn this now, you're not going to learn how to get rid of this stuff. Dude, they came in with their masks, their coughing, and everyone else is like, you know, you see one, like, oh my God, what's going on? I said, guys, with what we're going to be, I'm going to be teaching you, I'm going to get you in such a high frequency that the, the, the illnesses just can't get you. On day two, all of their masks came off. But what I said to them on day one was, we're not eating for three days. And people started to freak. And I said, guys, you got to understand, there's a reason why all these ascended masters, you look at people like Confucius, the Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, all these people, why would they all fast for 40 days and 40 nights when they didn't even have contact with each other? Because there was a formula back then that they realized that when they did fast for 40 days and 40 nights, their energy, instead of energy being used to digest food and break food down, now that energy is being, first of all, being used to do some housekeeping that needs to happen within the body. But then that energy opens up to an infinite energy, to this energy that is endless. And when that starts to breathe through you, the whole game changes and success resources said to me like, like you're having all these physical breakthroughs and mental breakthroughs and relationship breakthroughs. It's great, but we like some money breakthroughs. And I said, great. I said, when you've got the body, the mind and the spirit all connected in these high frequencies, you can literally take something from the fabric of your mind and you can pull it into this reality faster than what most people think is possible because now you've got the force of life behind you. And sure as be, and I'm not teaching them a single business strategy. I'm teaching them how to navigate their own ship because this spaceship is the best thing in the freaking universe when we open up to the truth. Yeah. And the day after the event, this guy landed a, a 320K deal. Uh, uh, just after that, a guy 90K in his account from a few deals that he did. And they're like, Skip, how is this possible? And I went, because you're believing it's possible. And you've had this you know, discipline and you've done some work up to now and you was ready to receive what was right, what you was in alignment for. I said, you wasn't ripping anyone off. You was offering more value, but there's a fair exchange there. And I said, when you get in alignment with that truth, there's always going to be interactions and transactions done with people, but we want it to be fair not where someone has to lose on a certain deal, not where we're trying to rape someone and get a good deal. We want to create win, win, win deals where everyone in the situation wins. And that way in life, we start to lay down the weapons of competition and we start to focus on collaboration. And that brings humanity back closer together again. 
And that is what our planet needs right now. And at some level, even though people are on lockdown, I think there are groups of people that are coming closer together. I'm starting to see it. Yeah, I'd agree, definitely. And, and this for me is what you're talking about there. I mean, I, I say I teach property, but the most rewarding thing for me is when people get this side, because when people get this, they come to me and say, I'm not even asked about the property. I'm not even bothered about making money anymore. You've given me something so much more than what, what I actually came for. Brilliant. It's beautiful, mate, because this is why like the, 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 the real leaders of the 21st century, they genuinely, genuinely, genuinely care about the people that are in front of them. And when you can care for their whole well-being, you, but you can provide a, a, you know, like a, a, a wealth solution or an investment solution at the same time, without providing that level of teaching, it's the old ways. And the old paradigm doesn't work because the old paradigm, I mean, let, let, let's look at a lot of the systems that are around the world, the education system, how many people really use what they use at school, what they learn at school in their lives and their adult, very few people, because it's, it's an academic system, it doesn't work. And for the first time, people not being able to do tests, dude, this is gonna rewrite, it, or it has the chance to rewrite the education system. When do we have to do a test in life? Yeah. It doesn't exist. We should just create in life. But there's a test and it has some people scarred when they come out of school because, and look at some of the best entrepreneurs around the world, they didn't do very well at school. But if you don't get those, uh, same as here, brother. Same here, mate. I'm, I'm with you. So what happens is we've got to get connected to the truth. And a lot of those systems that are being put into place, let's look at the pharmaceutical industry. It's not, a, it's not a wellness industry. We now know that the third leading cause of death on planet Earth is the correctly prescribed medication. We know that they're not inspired to make people well because if, you know, if they make people well, the money dries up. They're going to make trillions trillions on this vaccine if they get it right and they're doing a pretty good job so far and it will the fear that's going to go around the world again it's injecting fear fear is the illusion that we have to avoid let's look at a lot of the governments i mean you're a businessman i thought about this the other day you might like let's we're having an open conversation here so i'm just being transparent yeah. think about this the government have put something like 40 billion or well, they're saying they're going to put 40 billion into the economy for business owners to say, don't worry, we got you back. We're going to support you. You'd have to go to work. We're still going to pay for you. Now those 40, that, that 40 billion pounds, it's a lot of money. Hell of a lot of money. Hell of a lot of money. I don't know where they're going to get that money from. I, I have no clue that as far as I'm aware, they don't have that money to give. They've given it, but where are they going to take that money from? Hmm. They've got to get it from somewhere. But think about this. If the only people that they're saying are at risk are the older people, you know, majorly at risk, I've done my numbers, I've done my calculations, it's nothing compared to what they're giving us on the news. If we took 2 billion and we took all the older people that they're saying are at risk and we put them all into, I don't know, let's take a bunch of holiday resorts, we get, we get them all in the holiday resorts all around the world, we put people in there to look after them, to make sure that everyone's protected in there, they're having a damn good time, the rest of the country can carry on. Because they're all gonna be confined to one space. And instead of it costing an economy like 40 billion, it's cost two. Yeah. So why aren't decisions like this being made? Because the government, well, I don't even wanna get in that conversation, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that the systems that are in place these are the people that are running our company. Have you seen politicians where they're, where they're trying to discuss something in, in you know, it, the House of Commons and stuff? They're screaming at each other like kids in a playground. There's no intelligent conversations. There's no conscious conversations. We're like, right, what can we do? They're all competing and competing and competing. When we're in that compete mode, we are cut off from that creative part of us where when we're in creation mode, there's no competition. Yeah. So a lot of the systems that we got bought into are broken. And what I truly believe is when, when, when people like yourself can feel something which is more than what we got taught what we are, because we didn't get uh, born into a spiritual reality. And a lot of, you know, for me, even when like, I never went to church, I never had a, re a, a religious upbringing, but 
when I've now gone and read a lot of the scriptures and a lot of the teachings within them, there's a lot of good stuff that was, that is within them. Yeah. But my question is, if Jesus came back now, would he want to be a Christian? <laughs> yeah. I don't think he would. I think he would just be himself. Yeah. And when we look at the, the, you know, how systems have been put in a place, like a lot of people don't know this, that when, when, when Jesus was like, you know, put on the crucifix, none of his teachings got into the public domain until 30 years after, because if anybody was speaking around his teachings, guess what? They'd be put up on the crucifix as well. And the other thing that I found really, really interesting is I, I know we're kind of sort of digressing here, but this is all us being disconnected from the truth. There was no disease on the planet 10,000 years ago didn't exist. The only time that diseases and illnesses started to get introduced to humanity is when we started to get connected to animals and we started to basically take animals and bring them into our houses, bring them onto our, you know, into our awareness. When we started to eat animals, all of this stuff started to bring in diseases. And, you know, with all the research that I've done now, um, all the gladiators back in the day, they were all living on plant-powered food because when you, you know, when you live on food that's had the energy of the sun, when you live on food that's got the energy of the planet, when you live on food that weathers the, uh, different seasons, and when you eat it, you're not just eating the food. You're eating the information of the sun. You're eating the information of the universe. You're eating the information of the planet. You put that in and just watch what happens. And it's a game changer. And if someone would have said to me, oh, Skip, you're gonna be living on plant food, I would have said, no freaking way, dude. Because yeah. I was raised on meat and veg, but I was raised into a way of life that wasn't sustainable. And, and it takes people like yourself to believe in what you're saying because it feels right. And if you do have a couple of people walk out, you as the businessman, the entrepreneur, you gotta say, right, do I wanna share a truthful message or do I just want to say something that people want to hear? Yeah. And, and that, that was very rare. It's only, uh, I've only had that once. But what I do get quite often when I explain that, I do get a lot of people that say, I totally trust you. I, I, I believe in that you believe in this thing. But they do, uh, quite a few people say, I do struggle with that. Um, and that's I, my answer to that is just like I said, be curious, go and have a look at these certain books. Uh, and quite often, a lot of those people come back to me and say, I get it. It's, uh... yeah. The, the most important thing is not just to get it on an intellectual level, which through this information phase, if you're a little bit of an intellect where you can absorb some information and then you can go and regurgitate it, they were becoming the, like the leaders. They were becoming the ones that would draw crowds because what they were saying sounded good. But the challenge is, how many people are actually living what they're teaching? There's a very, diff you know, very big difference between understanding something on an intellectual level and actually being the living, breathing version of it. And when you're a living, breathing version of it, you become someone like Russell Brand, such a free spirit that no one can crush you because when you're connected to that level of truth, and I'm not even following the guy, you know, I just know that he's truthful in, in his expression. And yeah, what he it. believes to be true, he says it and he goes, you know what, you don't want to listen to me, don't listen to me. Yeah. And it's the same, you, what will happen is, because we're like, when we, I, I had a, 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 one of my private clients the other day, and when I've got private clients, they, they pay me a lot of money. And this is a guy who, he's actually training with Richard Tan at the moment, that, that they do a lot of their physical training together. And he said to me, my God, Skip, because, you know, the, the process that you've got me going through, these activations you've got me going through, I always wanted to believe that this stuff was real. Now I'm experiencing it. And he said, you know, what can I do now? Because if I, I'm frightened, if I go into certain environments where people don't get this, it's going to pull me down. And, you know, so how can I go out there? And, and, and find people that I can connect to. I said, when you get it, you don't have to go out there hunting anymore. Yeah. You become a source that magnetizes people to you and you will start to naturally attract people that are vibrating in a similar frequency. Because yeah. when you vibrate in those frequencies, you can't fake it to get there. This is why we're seeing a lot of people now with telepathy. This is another part that's opening up to humanity because if you and I start to communicate during telepathy, you can't have a hidden agenda. You can't try and you know, be saying something nice, but you've got 
um, you know, at, at some level, you're trying to get one over on me. It, you, the only way you can get there is when you're in that level of truth. And when you're in that truth, this power, this intelligence, this life, it breathes through adults as it used to breathe through children. But now we can have it in our adult life. So what I say to people is the first thing is I say, go and be a child again. Not to be childish, but to be childlike. And we can start to see life through the wondrous eyes that children look through life where nothing's impossible. They dream big. They find the solutions. They just keep on at it and keep on until they get what they want. But we've forgotten a lot of that I stuff. agree. I, uh, I was saying to Gemma only last week, so Eckhart Tolle's book, um, Practicing the Power of Now. And I said to Gemma, because I've read that book about 10 times, and I remember coming downstairs and I went, if the whole world read that book and not just understood it at an intellectual level, like they understood that information and they were able to implement it, there'd never be another war, there would be no hunger, no poverty, just we would, there wouldn't be Russia, China, America, we would just be one planet, all of them divides, everything, the whole lot would just disappear. Yeah, 100%. You should check out his new book as well, or the, the one after that, it's called A New Earth. It's yeah, a much, yeah, much easier read, and it's a much better read as well. It's it's awesome. It's really good. Yeah, he's a genius, that guy. Absolute genius. Yeah. But what's he okay. talking about? He's not talking okay. about just the mind and body. Yeah, he's talking about the spirit. Yeah. So if people think that me and you are weird and we're having a weirdo conversation, that's not weird. That's life. Because if I go and insult them, and they're like, "What the hell is he doing? Sticking their fingers, at guys." I'm doing it to try and change your state, to open you up to more of the truth. Not to saying that you're wrong, but what I'm saying is that there was a time where I didn't believe in the spirit. There was a time when I only thought I was a mind and body. And when I was, oh, the, the, the time when I hit major depression, when you know I never thought I was going to walk again, I can tell you now, bro, if I didn't connect to that spirit, there's no way that you and I'd be having this conversation because I'd have still been stuck in track. My, my, my life on a mental and a physical level would have been over. Yeah. And when you allow that spirit to breathe through you, miracles can get born. And is it better to believe in miracles than not? I think so. Yeah. Because, you know, out in Asia, um, the press ended up labeling me the miracle man. And we had, um, we actually had one of the organizations out there try and shut me down. We had the, um, the Ministry of Health. We, we, we went out there and we started hitting a lot of the press. We were getting on the big TV shows, on the radio shows. We like, you know, all the press were giving us a, a, a lot of coverage. And, and they ended up calling me the, the, the miracle man. And what I say to people is, look, it's nice you saying that, but the truth is everyone's the miracle. That's just the way it is. And, and the Ministry of Health came in and, the, and these organizations can put a lot of pressure on you. And they were saying, you're saying this and you're saying that and it's not true. And I went, it is true. They went, no, it is. I went, in my world, it's true. I said, I can prove it to you. I can, I, I, I will, you, you can see the video testimonials. You can see, because we had, like on one of my retreats, we had a lady come. She was born not being able to hear. She had six operations throughout her life to try and hear again. Each operation obviously failed because ultimately she couldn't hear again. Uh, I think it was 40, in her 40s, they said, um, they said to her, look, we can't do any more operations because there's so much scar tissue in your ears and, and we can't give you a hearing aid um, because, because of the condition that you've got. We're really sorry, there's nothing we can do and you're going to have to spend the rest of your life uh, with no hope of ever hearing again. I meet her in her 50s and she says, oh, you, I heard you called the miracle man. Can you heal me? And I said, well, it doesn't really work like that. I said, because I'm not going to stand over you and heal you like traditional healers will. I said, but what I'll do is I'll take you through certain processes. So on the retreat, similar to yours, like, you know, we start at like 7, 7.30 in the morning and we go till late. And on the last one, sometimes we would go until 1.30 in the morning. People think, oh my God, it's going to wear me out. No, it doesn't wear people out. When we connect to this infinite intelligence, the energy is just going to keep breathing through you and breathing through you. And it's a wake up call. And she left that retreat. So what I said to her was that you go through the processes and you play full out. You won't need me to heal you. You'll know how to heal yourself. Yeah. And she left that retreat with perfect hearing in one ear with a little bit of hearing in the other. She came back to the retreat the second time and three years on 
she still has perfect ear hearing in both ears. Wow. How the hell do you even explain stuff like that? Yeah. So there's stuff out there that is beyond this physical realm. There's stuff out there that we are not meant to see as human beings. There are so many different frequencies. That, like, you know, if we blow a dog whistle, humans can't hear it, but dogs can. So what we know is that there's a lot more to life than what we can see. So just like when someone goes and gives you a Wi-Fi code and now you can go and get connected to the World Wide Web and you can do upload and download and you can connect with anyone around the world in real time and all this, when you get your body, your mind and your spirit connected in these higher frequencies, then imagine what humans start to upload and download. It's the stuff that is changing our future for the better. And what I truly believe is that our younger generation are going to be the ones to save the planet. Yeah. Awesome. Right. I'm going to, a uh, couple of questions I want to, uh, we, we were, we were completely off track, but I've absolutely <laughs> loved this. Um, you've mentioned discipline. I've got discipline on. Um, it's what I named my company. Uh, I was uh, blown away that nobody had took the name discipline limited. It was just, wow. uh, I looked at it and it was just there. Uh, I think that was about three, four years ago. Brilliant. So, I believe that discipline is the foundation of all success and anybody who achieves anything can, and it's not particularly, doesn't mean like making millions or being a famous pop star. Any area that's working well in someone's life is because they're applying discipline to that area. So if somebody uh, have got a really good marriage, it's because both of them couples are applying discipline to that marriage. And if the, you maybe is lacking in a particular area in your life, it's because of a lack of focus and discipline in that area. So what discipline do you apply that's got you to where you are? Beautiful question. Such a beautiful question. And, and I'm so with you, bro, on the, on the whole discipline thing. So, so when I end up quitting um, uh, gymnastics and I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, you get, you know, you get the gold medal, you get the trophy, you get the title. But back then, you know, I'm, I'm nearly 47 years old now. So going back then, uh, when I was like early 20s, we're going back, what, 25 years. There just wasn't money in the sport. So it's like, great, I've got a great title. I became a champion. But now what the hell am I going to do in my life? And I knew it wasn't going to be staying in the gym environment. And so I applied that discipline to to my business and I ended up, so I was so focused and, and I ended up bringing acrobatics to some of the world's biggest shows and from someone who knew nothing about business, we're doing contracts with the Royal Opera House, the Royal, uh, the Royal Albert Hall, uh, if pop stars and rock stars were feeling like 80 to 100,000 people, I was the guy to get the call to bring acrobatics to the shows and then we start doing X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, TV shows like that and you know, working with people like Andrew Lloyd Webber and, you know, shows in the West End. And my job was just play do because no one knew what I knew. And this is before Cirque du Soleil exploded. So there was like musical theater for singers, dancers and actors, but there was nothing for acrobats. So I became the go-to guy, but then I, so it was discipline that what I learned was, uh, and I'll give you an idea like discipline. I ended up finding a coach when I went back to gymnastics, like after I broke my back, and, and I, you know, I got told I'm never going to walk again. When I had this feeling inside that you've got to go back to gymnastics, you, you've got unfinished business there. And I was like, wow. And there was no fear. And my mum even said to me, he's like, are you mad? Why would you want to go and do that? You know, that, that you, you nearly died. You know, you, you, the whole family went through this challenge with it. And I was like, mum, that's my destiny. That's what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to go back. Now I found a coach who was two times world champion and from Bulgaria, and he, before I met him, I didn't have discipline at the levels that I had the habit, and he taught me discipline, dude, in ways that I didn't even know existed, like, you know, I'm talking like in being in bed at like, say, two, three in the morning, sleeping, and all of a sudden, you get woken up, train, and I'm like, the hell? I'm dreaming about this guy, oh my God, I can't get him out of my head, because we ended up having a love-hate relationship, because he pushed me so hard, that I just didn't like what I was going through. But now, you know, I see that he pushed me because he knew what I had in me. He wasn't pushing me to try and break me. And there were days where I couldn't get out of bed. 
and they would literally scoop me, you know, they'd get me in a, in, in a car, they'd get me on the massage table, they'd start massaging me just so I could start to get the body warmed up again to go and do another session. And I remember this, there was a, um, in, in Kings Lynn, there was a, a big speedway and this was when raves were starting to really kick off. And, and someone, you know, this group of people, they were watching me training and where we were, you know, people could come and watch you training all the time. And they said, look, we've got this big event happening and we've got all these lights, you know, we're going to get you know, thousands of people there with some of the stuff that we've seen you do. Can you just come and perform that at this event? We've never seen anyone be able to do this stuff. I said, I'd love to. So I go to this rave, never been to anything like that before. And there was like the band, it was like this big pyramid and there was a band uh, or, you know, live band on the on the lower level, dancers on this level, vocalists on this level, and then right at the top was me, basically freestyling gymnastics and break dancing and all that sort of stuff at the top. Now the vibe was so good, and obviously now I realise that people's on drugs. Back then I didn't understand why people were so happy because you know being a gymnast you don't go anywhere near that stuff. So I'm like, why is everyone so happy? Everyone wants to hug me all the time. It's brilliant in here. Yeah. And I ended up staying till like six in the morning got back, got in a bath, got really tired. And my mum was like, where the hell have you been? You know, Svetlor's going to be, he's going to go crazy. And I said, look, it's all right. I'll talk to him. I'll come and train tomorrow. Anyway, I went in the gym and I started to get really tired. So I went to the gym and I said to him, I said, look, Svetlor, that big rave that was on last night, I got asked to go and dance there. And I went and I haven't had any sleep. I said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to do this again. I said, but can I just have today? Because we were training eight hours a day six days a week, wow. hardcore, hardcore. It was super. But what I learned was how powerful we can be and how we So he puts his arm at me and he goes, I, 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 he goes, I love the fact that, you know, you're always being truthful with me. And he goes, so today, and I, in my head, because I'm getting tired, I'm just hearing that, yes, you can go home and come in tomorrow and train tomorrow. And he goes, because, you know, I, I like you speaking the truth. He goes, you know, today we're going to double the session. And I walk off and I say, right, thanks a lot. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. And he pulls me away and goes, you didn't hear what I said. I said, you said, I'll see you tomorrow. He said, no. He said, we're now doubling our session. So we were doubling the session. I said, Svetl, I've had no sleep. I said, it's going to kill me. He goes, no. He goes, it's going to be the birth of you. I said, what are you talking about? He said, when we are going to be ready to compete at the English Champs, he goes, I'm going to get you so wired up that it's going to be harder for you not to win than it will be to win. Because we, the discipline that he had, and, and remember, he came from back in the day where Russia and Bulgaria, they were winning everything because they had the best coaches. And, and England didn't stand a chance, whereas now we've got the best coaches and England seem to be winning all the stuff in gymnastics. So... We then started training and, and, and he said to me, he goes, imagine if I can get you doing double now, you're training harder than anyone else in the country. He goes, if you do this now, your discipline's going to go up, your performance is going to go up, and what strength and energy and flexibility and balance you find within yourself, you can't find it at any other time because now you're exhausted. Now we have to do it. And there was a little part of me where, which was going like, fuck you, man, fuck yeah. you. But there was also a little part of me going, fuck, he's speaking some truth. And I said, you know what, let's do it. And I literally, we, when we finished, I lied on a crash mat, dude. I slept for 14 hours in the gym on the crash mat. And what I learned was that what discipline does, like, because most people only want to do things when it's comfortable. Life a comfortable life doesn't bring any joy to anyone because life, Neil Donald Walsh, you know, his, his quote, life begins outside of your comfort zone. When yeah. we can get comfortable with being out of our comfort zone, we're finding more strength. We're finding more balance. We're finding more opportunities. We're finding more money. We're finding more love. We're finding more passion. We're finding more of all the good stuff. Now with my uh, client the other day, and I said to him, and you know, this is a guy, you know, he, he's a very wealthy guy. And I said to him, I said, look, Bernard, I said, when you're training, I said, you know, because you've got a big organization. I said, but now you're training for these triathlons and all this stuff. I said, how much do you love your training? He said, probably about 60%. I said, so what's the other 40%? He went hard. Yeah. I said, why do you do it? He said, because I know what's on the other side. And without having that level of discipline, 
you can't find more parts of yourself. It's like, you know, you want to build a muscle. Yeah. You don't go, oh, nice muscle. Let's, let's go and grow. No, you've got to put a demand on it. You put a demand on it consistently and you attack it from different angles. All of a sudden, bam, you've got a strong bicep that you can then go and use in an area of your life or you can sculpt it like an artist to be like, you know, however you want. It's open, discipline opens people up to more of what they are. And it's that simple. Yeah, I agree. I, I, when I was in the army, I did the para course. And I remember on day one, they said to me that we're going to take you past a level of your fitness. So um, it's going to come down to that mental. And I always remember because I, um, coming home after the first week, and I was very fit. I was a physical training instructor in the army. Yeah. You had to be fit. I was the leader on one of the five maybe on camp physical training instructors out of a thousand men. I had to be one of the leaders. And I went on that training. and it was just summer above and beyond anything I'd ever experienced. And I remember coming home and actually I was really emotional. Um, and if on my last video, on the last day when I, I passed it and I got awarded the maroon berry and I just, just, you can just see that in my face, just that complete, I would never ever want to go and do that again, ever. Oh, no. It was just, but I bet you're glad you did it. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and this is like, you know, when we run the live events, like, you know, Greg was at the last one in Spain and there's 49 processes that I take people through. And I don't know if you've seen the video from Greg. He said that, you know, here's a guy who's worth 100 million and has built up big organizations and, and, and you know, had everything materialistic, you know, the helicopter, the cars, the, you know, eight million pound house had you know, the, the, you know, the beautiful family. He had all the things that we thought we needed to get in life, but in that process, he lost himself. Yeah. And because the body, he was living with the body and the mind. When the process that I take people through, it's not like me trying to say, you got to believe in God, you got to believe in spirit, you got to believe in this non-physical thing. What I find is that the ones that are the biggest doubters have the biggest epiphanies. They have the biggest awakenings because you can't deny the truth because it's science. It's like, yeah. you know, two plus two equals four, no matter who you are doing it. If I throw this up, there's a certain law that says it's going to come down no matter who throws it up, no matter what move we're in when we do it. And through the experiences that I've gone through without the discipline and without believing in something beyond ourselves, there's no way I'd be living the life that I'm living now. No way. And, and there was a time in life where I wouldn't have believed that I'd be living this type of life. And, you know, what I want people to really know is that when you do introduce discipline and it's done in a way where when there's discipline, what you're going to really find is that you're going to go through the different seasons. Because if you're doing the same thing every single day, you've got to do it, whether it's rain, whether it's shine, whether there's a thunderstorm, whether there's a dark cloud, you show up and you do it. And what that does is it gets rid of the time wasters. The people who ain't committed are never, ever going to achieve mastery. And if we want to achieve mastery, we got to decide, this is it. I'm going to be consistent with this because without consistency, there's no way that you can be great at anything in life. It just can't happen. You know, the sun doesn't give up. It shines all the time. The, you know, the planet doesn't give up on us. You know, our hearts don't give up on it. Well, I'll say our hearts don't give up on us. When the body, the mind, and the spirit is in alignment, it won't give up on us. Yeah. But if we're cut off from the truth, we just have to see what's going on around the world. Most people don't like their work. Most people are not taking any love to work. There's no heart and soul in what they do. And when do most people have it? Because the first sign of a heart attack now, there's no precursor. The first sign of the heart attack is the heart attack. When do most people have a heart attack? There have been many studies done around the world showing this between 8.30 and 9 o'clock Monday morning. So what are most people doing at that time? They're getting ready to go to work. So their work has literally killed them. So the idea now is, you know, people have got a chance to, especially through this phase that we're going through now, people have got the chance to sit and reflect. They've got a chance to really say, right, okay, is the life that I'm living the life that I want to live? You know, what do I want to improve in my life? And it should start with ourselves. Like, do I want to have more energy? 
Do I want to have higher immunity? Do I want to boost up my self-defense mechanisms? Do I want to get more strength? Do I want to get more balance? Do I want more flexibility? You know, what do I want for this thing that I live in? Because as soon as you claim those tools or those um, elements back, then wherever you go in life, you're now going to take more of you into it. And whether you're focused on your personal life or your business life, both of them will start to expand and evolve and become more because we become more. People can use this phase now as the best awakening chapter of their life. They really can if they get connected to the truth. Love it. Skip, I've absolutely loved this. I want to ask you one final question. This is one of my favorite ones. So we fast forwarding now and it skips funeral and your loved ones are there, your family, friends, work colleagues. What do you want them to say about you? What do you want to be remembered for? I don't really care. To be honest, you know, if they're there and they're saying he was a good human being, that's all that really matters to me. Doesn't really bother. Okay. Because I think that you know, when people get hooked on, I want this and I want that, none of us can actually predict what's going to happen in the future. And, and it's not a vision of mine because the vision of mine is how am I showing up right now? That's all that really matters to me. You know, the Air Cartola stuff, you know, I've got a phrase that says live now. You know, live now, live in this present moment. And when we do that, and the now stands for nutrients, real simple. You know, it, all food is, is a shuttle system to be able to get the nutrients in the food into your, into your blood. If those live nutrients don't get in the blood, waste of time. What's O stand for? Oxygen. Most people aren't even breathing correctly anymore. And by the way, dude, let me make some common sense here. The number one cancer that people aren't talking about is what? Lung cancer. Now, the reason being is because their lungs are weak. When we stress... Instead of us having deep diaphragmic breaths in our stomach, which is how we're meant to be breathing, we start having these short, shallow breaths up here. Guess what? Use it or lose it. The lungs are going to shut down if you don't use them correctly. So then when so people are getting weak lungs, that's where the lung cancer comes from. But no one's talking about this because it isn't a business yet. Like all the other cancers, like the breast cancer and the prostate cancer. Isn't it so interesting that this COVID-19, that this coronavirus, where does it attack? the lungs, because they're weak in most people. So we've got to make sure that we start breathing correctly. Best way for that is to go and find some fun exercise. And what's the W stand for? Water. We're mostly made of water, but people aren't hydrating with water anymore. They're hydrating with energy drinks and sports drinks and colored drinks and caffeine drinks and all this stuff. And they wonder why their brains aren't functioning properly. They're dehydrated. So when you learn how to live now, so I suppose what I'd love to you know, leave behind is people really know, knowing and applying how to live now. That's all that really matters. Awesome. Absolutely love that, Skip. Thanks very much. Uh, awesome. If people are listening now, where can they find Skip? So where do they, where do they follow you? Where do we find your work? Brilliant. So if they come over to Skip Archimedes Live or Skip Archimedes on Facebook, they can come over to Skip Archimedes on uh, Instagram. They, and if they do come there, there's lots of free stuff that we're giving away for people. Um, if they come over to the Facebook, we're giving a three-part mini-series away around the whole COVID-19 where they're going to actually, it's not just information going in, it's stuff that's literally going to boost up their immunity by them applying what I'm teaching and, and other people, if they, if they want to understand, uh, this thing that we've got in our mind is so powerful. Like our mind, it can make us ill. It can make us well, depending on what we focus on. So we created this thing called a High Performance Mind Masterclass. And basically what it does is it allows people to take back control of this thing. And we, you know, we've charged people thousands for this uh, information in the past. And because of what we're going through at the moment, we're just gifting it away free of charge people. So if they want to come on there, they can click a link, go through to it, and they can get entered into um, receiving all of this stuff completely free. Because, you know, a lot of the information that's coming in for people, it is killing them. And we want to make sure that the information that's coming in is putting life back into people. That's the most important thing that we need to focus on. So. Anyone who's listening to this, I know this has sounded really weird, but usually when change happens in life, 
things are weird for a little bit. It's just like when we tied our shoelaces for the first time, it was complicated, it was weird, but now we do it without thinking about it. So the stuff that we're sharing, it's not weird for us. So take what we're saying, chew on it, try it, experience it, because when you've experienced it, you're never going to look back. Yeah, there's one question here. Um, somebody's wrote, it's not just all people that are dying from or catching the virus. Very that's, true. That's probably in relation to you putting all the old people together. Okay. Let's take that, Let's take that last one. Beautiful, uh, beautiful statement. And whoever wrote that is absolutely true. It's only the people with the weak immunity. That's it. They, they, it was older people that were targeted first. Now what they're finding is other people are now dying of it. But if your body and your mind and your spirit are working well, it, it, it's common sense, dude. It's like if someone walks in a room with a cold, is everyone going to get it? No. The ones with a weak immune system. If everyone, someone walks in a room with a flu, is everyone going to get it? No, they're not. The ones that are going to get it are the ones that have a body where their defense system isn't working the way it should. If that jumps into me or you or someone else, we may not even notice a symptom. At worst, we may experience a little something, but the body is going to push it out because the intelligence that is within us is beyond measure. It's way more intelligent than a virus. But if we go into fear, immediately we lower our own defense mechanism. So the most important thing is to take back control of the mind. So yeah, people do want to you know, come across and get that high performance mind masterclass because we're giving it away for free at the moment. Love that. Thanks, Skip. We'll catch up soon. You're a legend. Thanks, brother. Yeah, thank you.